everybody, I'm going to wait a few more minutes. Wait a few more minutes and then we're going to get started. We're going to get started. We're going to wait just a few more minutes. But we're going to get started. So tag somebody on this. Tag somebody on this and invite them in. Invite them in. And we're almost ready. Oh my God. Testing, testing. Okay. Just making sure you can hear me. Share this with somebody. Share this with somebody. Hit that share button. Hit that share button. And if you're on this page and you and you've been coming on this page for a while, um, as you already know, I don't ask for much, but I would like for you to like the page. Just hit the like button. And uh, somebody said to me the other day. They said, I don't know that you should be doing this. And I, I, I asked them why. And uh, they said to me, because people are paid thousands of dollars to do what you're doing. And you're sitting on Facebook doing it for free. Institutions. I have been approached by institutions to become an instructor of the psychology, the spiritual psychology of the mind. And that's not where I think God want me right now. So if I'm not sitting here asking you for money for this, then the least you can do is hit the like button and share it. That's not too much to ask, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, we're there. And I'm doing this. I'm trying to see what's wrong with my microphone. Something is going wrong here. I don't know what. Something is going wrong here. Testing, testing. Unique, I need you to come. Something is not on. Testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Okay. Well, we're getting started while she's fixing it. Thank you for joining me every day, right here on that three with me. And um, as I stated to you earlier, that I was being very, very careful at um, how I am approaching this phase of the lesson because it is very, very critical. And I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that um, what is happening in the lives of people as a result of looking at this broadcast and listening to this broadcast is literally life-changing. And so every time I feel it, you know, that 
that whole, you know, don't rush the process. Don't rush the process. I have to be obedient to that because sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm giving out a lot of information, a lot of information. And a lot of this information, I want to make sure that you're able to process it. I got a phone call from my brother and, um, he said to me, you know, a couple of nights ago, he said, I listened to one of your lives. Put a little reverb on it. I listened to one of your lives, and he said, I was I was up for three days, you know, just like working like a machine. And, and, and you know, I went back, and, and I turned it back on, and, and I grabbed another part, and then I had friends of mine to call me and, and, and say to me, you know, it's, it's like I'm in a therapist's office on the couch. And, um... You're literally walking me through this transition that I'm going through. And so I said, then let me go back and listen. And so I went back as far as the car when I was sitting in the car. And I listened. And I don't normally do that. I mean, anybody that knows me, they know when I get off the live, I don't go back and view the live and, you know, I don't go back and, and sit and listen unless I literally feel led to do that. And, um, and it's not often because I feel like once I'm done with it, I'm done with it. And I've said what God wanted me to say. But this time, I was led to go back and look at all the lives from the time that I was in the car. And... Um, yeah, I, I, I needed to, to slow down. Yeah, because, let me, let me bring this a little closer here. Um, she set this up for me. Yeah, um, I needed to slow down because that was a lot of weighty, weighty information that... We're not in that place of it sound good. This, this, this. We're in the place that this is life changing, and and I have to be able to take this knowledge and do something with it. It's like this is a requirement now. This is not, you know, me preaching in the church, and we're gonna slap high five, and we're gonna run, and we're gonna we're gonna shout, and, and you know, we're gonna decree and declare. Nothing wrong with that in its place. So don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with that in its place. But when you start talking about me taking a mind shift that is going to not change my mind, because we're not talking about this, because if we're talking about this, then this can be flipped back here. We're not talking about that. We're talking about this, picking up my mindset and setting it over in another lane. In another lane. We're talking about, um, because when you take the brain out and you sit it on the table and you look at, remember I talked about all the grooves that's in the brain. Those are, those are, those are life experiences that is that is engraved in that in those in those veins and in those grooves. That's that's a person's lifestyle that is just highways of many directions and from many directions. And so you can't undo that. You can't undo that. You can't erase where you've been. The blood can wash away the sin, but you can't erase where you've been. Mm -hmm. And so the damage done, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So the damage that's done from the shaping of iniquity, meaning Doing things without God, doing things without the plan of God, without the will of God, without the knowledge of God. It has grooved our brains. And so um, 
the reason why the enemy constantly, constantly reappears, reoccurs, uh, uh, try to um, cause you to reminisce, bring up old habits, old conversations, is because a highway is there. A highway is there. Remember, working with the warfare. Working with the warfare. Working with the warfare. So, in order for me to change that and get to where I'm trying to go, God, help me today. Help me today. Get to where I'm trying to go. Then I have to not just create another neural pathway. I want to make this real clear today. This part I want to make clear. Not me just making another neural pathway. Because watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You can read a book. Um, you can read a book on anything. I, I read a book once on uh, called... Um, called... Uh, 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 what was it? Uh, the Heart's Cold. Read a book called The Heart's Cold. Did I remember everything about the book? No. You know, do I remember every single thing about everything that I read in the book? No. But information went in. Watch this. A pathway, a neural pathway that is habit forming was not created because I didn't read that repetitively. I, I didn't constantly put that in my mind every single day, every single day. That's why they said a person um, have not mastered anything unless you've done it consistently for 10 years. Practically every day. Some part of it for 10 years. So I've been preaching and ministering since I was 12. I ran my first revival at 16. So you're not considered as a master of anything unless you've done it for at least 10 years. So the neuro pathways, they are created because of something that is done repetitively all the time, repetitively all the time. So when we do things, whether it, 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 it be negative or positive, we're creating that neural pathway. And so done repetitively enough, it now becomes your being. So if you are a fearful person, it's because that's what you've constantly fed your mind. You, 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 you've constantly set yourself in a position um, to be constantly told to be afraid, to be, to be showed that you should be afraid. Um, you watch fearful things. Um, that's why a lot of all them scary movies and stuff like that, I can't watch that, that craziness. I can't. So I, I can. I can just watch people. I just, oh, okay. You, you go ahead. You go ahead. Because the bottom line of it is, is what I feed that neural pathway, it gives it a deep highway. Have you ever been going down the expressway and next time you get on the expressway and it's one that's well-traveled, that I'm not talking about a new highway they just created, you could actually see where, where, where tires going over a certain pathway in the highway has even caused the highway to have dents in it on both sides because it is a well-traveled highway. And it will cause the car to go into a little rumble when you try to change lanes because that groove has been placed there for cars to stay right there. So now... Watch this. So now, well, Dr. Bonnie, well, how do I get over here? Because if I just heard the word, you know, and I just picked up the Bible and I just read the scripture, you know, um, and I just read this today, you know, how, how does this affect me like that? How, how do I have a, how do I create a neural pathway within? You know what? I may be just a long ways coming off from it. And that's why the Bible says this, that the letter killed it, but the spirit causes the letter to come alive. The spirit gives the letter life. 
I want you to hear this. And this is the reason why I want, Lord Jesus, this is something else. Why a prophetic word from God, a prophetic word from God. I'm not talking about something made up in the, in the spirit world. Because you can grab stuff from the spirit world, from spiritualism. Because they're demonic forces with information. That's what that is. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a divine download that's, that's been sent timely for you. When that divine dart from the word of God is sent down with a charge in it. I'm talking about a charge from God. I mean, it's a divine assignment because it's divine timing of the Lord. When that word hits your life, it's like throwing a bomb into the earth realm. You see those movies, how they say, you know, a, 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 a rocket ship or an alien ship hit the ground. Remember the one about um, uh, Nord and, 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 and Superman and how some orbit come and hit the ground and create this, this big hole, this big cavity in the ground because it impacted the ground. But what hit the ground was so powerful that it had to make an announcement about its presence by interrupting what was already there. Did you get what I just said? Did you get what I just said? This is the reason why being in the presence of the Lord is a necessity for people who have been called to a divine assignment. Because I constantly need that watch this. I constantly need those implodings, those 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 bombs from the word of God. Why? Watch this. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. This is gonna bless you so good right here. This is giving me to bless you so good. I need this because because it says here. In Hebrews 4 and 12. And I want you to understand what we're talking about. We're not talking about a textbook. We're talking about the word of the Lord and why it is important for your divine assignment, divine assignment, business, venture, whatever it is. To open up a gym, uh, to open up a restaurant, uh, to, to create your own credit union, your own bank. I'm, I'm trying to tell you how we're going to get in as believers. Because the enemy has fixed it so that if it's not for divine in intervention, we won't get in this society. We will have a piece of it, but we won't possess the seven mountains. And the only way we qualify to do that, we have to be like Nehemiah. We have to be sent by a word from God. That's what makes room. That's what pushes everything to the side. That's what gives you access, authority, and right. I have access in here, I have authority in here, and I have the right to be here. And because I have the right to be here, he would even make the evil authorities yield to what it is I need. They don't have a choice because something has interrupted. Now watch this. Not just interrupted your mind when it came, when the word came, it didn't just interrupt your thoughts. It didn't just create a neural pathway in your mind, in your brain. It did it simultaneously in the earth realm. The Lord has made room for you. And you don't have to believe that. I'm just, I'm just, that's a prophetic word. The Lord has made room for you. Something's got to move over. There's a shift that's already been made with your name on it. <laughs> My God. Watch this. It says, for the word of God is living. The word of God is living. This is, this is Hebrews 4 and 12 in the Amplified Bible. And I got to take it this slow so that you can un understand what I'm saying to you today fully. The word of God 
is living. The word of God is living. 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 I got to call her back up here one second. The word of God is living. What does that mean, living? Living in this time? No, no, no. Not, not, not living because you live. Not, not living um, like you're born and the word of God was living. The word of God is living because it was living before the living. The word of God was living before the living. Before there was anything living. The word of God was alive. Does that make sense to anybody today? I want you to really get that in your head. The word of God was living before you were living. And the word of God was living before any living being. The book of Colossians tells us that. That before anything was made, all things was made by him, for him. Uh huh. And all things are kept and held together in him. All things were made by him, for him. And all things are held together in him. Are you hearing that? Turn it down some. Are you hearing that? So that means that everything that is living became alive when he created it to be alive by his word. So then his word is the longest living thing that has ever existed. <laughs> My God. So if it's a tree, that is spoken into the earth realm. Then the tree receives divine roots permission to penetrate a ground that was already there that is prepared to accept the living. I said a tree is going to be alive and dirt. You are going to compensate everything that this tree needs to stay alive. And its roots are going to interfere with the pattern of how I set you. Woo! My God from Zion. Jesus, help us, God. I, I, are you hearing that? So in other words, please listen. In other words, Genesis 1 tells you about everything that was made. But when you get to Genesis 2, okay, Lord, he said go there. When you get to Genesis 2, Genesis 2 gives you the chronological order that it was made in. And so Genesis 2 and 4 says, this is the history of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. When no plant of the field was yet in the earth and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not yet caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. But there went up a mist fog, the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of the spirit of life, and man became a living being. Did you see the chronicle of before? There was no plants, there was no trees, there was no dog, cats, elephants, none of that. It was dirt, and the mist came up, which was the spirit of the living God. And then God created man, breathed into his nostrils, and caused him to become a living soul. So the longest lasting living thing breathed into its first creation, which was you. Good Lord have mercy. So every time I take a deep breath and breathe out and blow out, I am inhaling and exhaling because the, lo the longest living thing in the earth realm, in the longest living thing in the galaxies, in the universe, in the stratospheres, in every hemisphere, was the word of God, was what he said, was his breath. Man... 
Man, 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 my God, 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 my God. This is why the enemy is afraid of your prophetic word. This is why he hates you. Because now that I'm in this world and I have the breath of life from God, he does not want me to ever reconnect back with the breath of the spirit of God. Because when I do that, and the only way that I can do that, I have to have a word in me from God. I need the living word that comes with that living spirit so that not only do I have the breath of life, I have the breath of the spirit, and now I can create something that, oh, I can speak those things which be not as though they were. Why? Because I have recreated and reconnected the, watch this, the breath of life with the breath of the spirit. And the way I was able to do that is because I got a word from God. And watch this, because it is the longest lasting living thing that have ever existed in the history of everything. When that word lands in me, it cuts a passageway in my brain as if it's been there for years because the word of God is eternal and it is the only thing that carries that kind of weight. That you can live in sin all these years. You can do things backwards all these years. You can do stuff the wrong way all these years and have deep neural passageways in your brain of confusion and wrong thinking and wrong doing and then boop out of nowhere. A word from God, from the scripture can come and cut another highway deeper than what's already there. And it will operate and cause you to operate as if you've been doing it for years. Whew, did y'all get that? Ooh. Please tell me somebody got that. Please tell me you got that. Please tell me you got that. I'm proving it right now. I'm proving it right now. It, it, it says, for the word of God is living. Uh -huh. Longest living thing ever. My God. Longest living thing ever. The word, the, the word of God was, the, 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 I, I got to keep on saying it like that so that you can get this. The longest living thing since forever. It is forever and ever and ever and ever. It is throughout eternity and all the eternities. It's the, it, the word of God. My God, thank you, Jesus. It's the longest living anything. It, nothing has a passageway deeper than its ability because it's been here longer than anything that's already here. Good Lord, have mercy. Are you hearing this? It says, for the word of God is living and active. Active and full of power. Making it operative. It, it's got so much power, it's making it operative, energizing and effective. Listen at this. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far deep as a division of of the soul and the spirit, the completeness of a person. Y'all gonna make me run. Jesus, have mercy, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm not. I'm not talking. About, I'm not talking about the prophecy that Deacon Wallerman had. They they told me that the Lord said, No, 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 no. I'm talking about when the prophecy is 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 aligned with with the longest living thing in the earth realm. Did you get what I said? When the prophecy is aligned with the longest living thing in the earth realm, the word of God, and it hits your brain, even before you can make one move to put it into operation, it's already operating. Even when you don't have the full plan, it's already operating. Even when you don't know which way to go yet, it's already operating. It's already doing its job. It's already gathering people. It's already made divine connections. It's an already, watch this, it has already hit the earth realm in such a way that it's not just in you, it's about you. And somewhere, there's a, there's a, 
somewhere there's a cavity in the earth realm, in some business, in some city, on some property, in a mortgage company, in a bank, there is something that have landed with your name on it. And I know it. I know it. If you're on this page and you're listening today, I know it. I know it. Something's got your name on it. Oh, Jesus. It's operating for you when you can't operate for yourself. And watch this. It's so deep. That thing is cutting up a neural path, pathway so deep in you. Until it is separating the soul and the spirit. It is, it is, it is separating old neural path, pathways, old fears and, and shakiness and insecurities and anxieties and doubts and inhibitions and all of that from what the spirit is doing that is connected to the longest living thing that has ever existed in all of the times of times. And it's keeping that over there. It's working over here in the spirit and keeping that over there. Are you? It's saying to the soul, you can cry, but we're doing something over here. It's saying to the limbic system, you can shed some tears, but we doing something over here. Look at what it says here. I'm almost finished today. It says penetrating as far as a division of the soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, and of both joints and moral, the deepest part of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. Listen to this. Listen to this. Look at this. Look at this. Nope, I'm not going to be on long today. I'm not going to be on long today. I'm almost done. <laughs> First John 2 and 20. First John 2 and 20 says... But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specifically gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our minds, and guards us from Error. Can I read that to you one more time? Can I read that to you one more time? First John 2 and 20. Amplified by. But you have an anointing. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say I'm anointed. I want you to do that. I want you to lay hands on yourself and say I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I didn't say do you feel anointed. I didn't say, do you believe you qualify for the anointing? I'm just giving you what the longest living, breathing entity of eternity, of all times, of every atmosphere, of every hemisphere, and every stratosphere have just spoken to you. But you have been anointed from the Holy One. You have been picked up from that highway, set over in this highway. That's why it's all new to you. So don't trip out. Don't trip out when it's all, you know, you, I, I, I told you, I told you what happens. I told, it, it's like, it's like somebody standing in front of you talking and y'all talking calm and all of a sudden they just slap your face and you just like, okay, just, just what happened? That's what, that, that's what happens to the brain when, when, when the prophetic word hits it, it's, it's, it, 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 it just change lanes. Like, like picture yourself driving on the expressway and you just humming along, humming along, and all of a sudden you, you switch over and, and have to change lanes right quick and everything in the car jerk. But 
then the car straightened out and you all right and you look in the rear view mirror like what what just happened why, why did my car switch over like that you know that you, you get what i'm saying that's what happens that's what happens when your divine timing comes it everything everything in the car is rocking so don't 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 trip don't don't trip you know everything is rocky right now it just you know friends crazy everybody just tripping you know things tripping Situations is tripping. Everything is just kind of, but you just gotta just just do self therapy. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. So calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You all right? You all right? Okay. There's been a lane change. There's been a prophetic word. A, a new passageway. A new neural pathway just got carved from the eternal word, the the longest living thing, and that thing went deep. So you know what? It just kind of kind of jarred me. And, and, and so what, what, what I've been, what, what just happened to you is that you have been knocked unconscious into spiritual consciousness. You have been knocked unconscious to the old pathway and you have been brought back. It's like being in a coma. And then when you wake up, you say, where am I? And, and the last thing you remember, you was in a car. And then you, you didn't know you was in an accident. So then you wake up and then your friends start telling you, oh, you were in the hospital and you're going to be all right. And you had a concussion and you was in a coma, but you fine and you got all your fingers and your toes and you're going to live. Okay, that's how I want you to look at this. Like it, it, the accident came because it, it was a divine interruption and the power of God said to the devil, no more, no more, no more. I said no. And so there's been a bang. A, 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 a collision has happened, and, and, and now you've been knocked unconscious, so now you've waking up, and you're on that three with me, and I'm here to say, stay focused, how many fingers do you see, what's your name, what's your address, you're going to live, you're going to survive this, no, you didn't die, you ain't lost no limbs, you're still in the land of living, but you know what, we got to take you to therapy, Thera T -H, not T-H-E-R-A-P-Y, he gave me the other day, T-H-O-R-O-U-G-H-P-Y, thorough P. That means complete, whole, no missing parts. Every intricate part of you now have to been, be taken thoroughly through to a whole nother lifestyle. So, you know, you survived it. You woke up out the coma. You gonna live. But now you got to go to therapy because I got to teach you how to walk all over again. Got to teach you how to talk all over again. That's right. Got to teach you how to rebalance your body. I know what I'm talking about. When I had that surgery and they took the, um, they took the 33 fibroids out of me and I went to sleep. They put me in a coma. A seduced coma. And when I woke up out of that coma. I was laying in the hospital, and my nana was there saying, you all right, how many fingers you see? You, you, you survived, but the doctor, Dr. Johnson right here, you woke, da-da-da, you all right? Everything went well. You know, they almost had to take everything out you and replace everything back and put everything back and put all your organs back in place. But neither you going to be all right. Just go back to sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Apostle Kara would say, God did it. God did it. You all right. And so when I looked over and saw Nana, and she was saying I was all right, and, and, and Lynn Baker was saying, Mother, you all right, and, and, and uh, Pastor Carrier, yeah, that's, my, that's my prophet, and she, she looked at me and said, God did it. She said, the devil is a lie. He tried it, but God did it. And I just closed my eyes and went on back to sleep. And so when I woke up, they said, now they want you to walk. And so Apostle Carrier came, and she, Marie Carrier, and she, she got me up out the bed, huh, Nana? And I couldn't walk but a few feet. And I just started trembling. And they had to bring me back. And she said, but you're going to learn how to walk again. Because God said you are right. And so then that next morning when I got ready to walk, she said, the Holy Ghost said a speedy recovery. She said, now we're going to get you up and you're going to walk. And that day, I walked around the whole top of the hospital floor seven times. till they had to stop me from walking. Because that prophetic word now made a connection. Are y'all hearing this? And it caused me to do something that my physical body and my natural mind said, you couldn't do this yesterday. So what makes you think you can walk today? But the, watch this. But Apostle Carrier walked with me. My God, thank you, Jesus. Somebody that was strong enough. 
somebody that had been in that position before. Somebody that was carrying that prophetic word for my life. She walked with me. And because she walked with me, she kept saying, you can do it. She kept saying, this is brand new. She kept saying, God made the devil out of a liar. And the more she spoke, the words of my new passageway. I was able to exceed the expectations so that the next morning the doctor said, get up, you can go home. Are y'all hearing this? I keep telling you, you got to watch who you connect with in this season. You can't be connected with nobody and never been through this before. You go somewhere and hush, bye. Because you don't know nothing about this. You've never been here before. But I have. That's why I'm sitting here. That's why God got me here. Name it. I can help you with it. I've been there. Sometimes you don't even know why you go through all the what you go through. But it's not about you. It's about who you have to help. Are you hearing this? Now let me tell you what happened. So then after I got home, a pastor carrier couldn't live with me. She had to go home. So then I had to learn how to go to the bathroom and come back and walk slow. But let me tell you what would happen to me. I would get up and at first I couldn't stand hardly. And I would just be kind of reeling. And I would have to just get my balance. And so I'm thinking, y'all, that you know what? They said I got to heal and after a while, I'm a, you know, I'm going to be all right. A year later, after the surgery, if I would get up too fast, I would kind of wobble. So I had to ask the doctor, why am I still wobbling? He said, because, watch this, watch this, because you were living with a foreign thing in you that had rearranged all of your organs. And you had learned how to balance your body and walk and dance and do everything you were doing with all of your organs, not where they were supposed to be, and 33 foreign substances living inside of you and you taught yourself a new balance. And now that all of that is out of you and I have set your organs where they're supposed to be, you got to learn now how to balance yourself right. Because now everything is in its rightful place. So yes, you're going to feel shaky. Yes, you're going to feel like, I don't know if I'm doing this. Yes, it's going to feel like you got to grab a hold to the table. Yes, you're going to have to say, oh God, oh Jesus, what now? But you're going to be all right. Because now that the new word has come, the pathway, the new prophetic word, the neural pathway, the one that's the longest living thing out of all the stratospheres and atmospheres and hemispheres have now cut a groove, not just in your mind and in your brain, but in the earth realm. You got to learn how to balance yourself now with what is right in your life. Because you've been so accustomed with being perfectly balanced with everything that's crazy and chaotic and benefits you nothing. Good Lord, have mercy. It's just a balancing act. Who am I helping? Am I helping anybody today? Am I helping anybody that just put some bumblebees bees up there? You got to grind your way to great. You got, you got, huge. you got to grind your way to greatness. And I, grind, 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 press the powder, mash it out. Anything that gets in my way, I'm going to grind it to powder. Because I'm in a new neural passageway. And the thing that's so, that's so crazy about it is when this direction comes, when this information comes, when this prophetic word is delivered in my life, it cuts a groove so deep that I don't even understand the depth of it. And that's why if I don't consistently and repetitively communicate with God through his word, I would never understand the height and the depth of what God has called me to do. And I would stop and celebrate. Watch this. Watch this. I will celebrate at the halfway point when I'm not even at the finish line. Good Lord have mercy. Are you hearing that? 
I would end up celebrating. And I would end up saying, wow. Because everybody else is saying, wow. Don't get stuck in another man's wow. Are you hearing this? That's why he said, what is presumption again? What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me go back and get this paper. Let me go back and get this paper. Let me go back and get this paper. Oh, God. Let me just read the whole thing. This is why you must take this journey. If you do not take the risk for your new balancing act. If we stay in the prescribed social roles instead of taking our new neuron prophetic pathway of a journey. You're going to continue to feel numb. That's why they say after surgery like that, you got to get up and walk. Because everything got to come back to life. Oh my God, thank you Jesus. It's got to come back to life. And I'm going to tell you something. I got to share this with you. This going this to this this really bless you. Whew. Sometimes I hate to, 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 to go back to these moments, but when they're necessary, I have to. Um, I remember one day I was, I, was, I was riding down the street. This was about maybe 2013, 2013. Driving down the street and, 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 and you know, just enjoying the music. And all of a sudden, I just, I just screamed out. I, ha I had a pain to, to, to hit the side of my thigh so hard until I just screamed. I mean, I had to pull the car over. I literally had to pull the car over. I was, I was yelling and, and, and crying and holding my leg. And it was like, 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 um, like I was quickening. And at first I thought, maybe I'm having a blood clot or I'm having an aneurysm or something. And I was, I was just hysterical. And so, at the time, I, I picked up the phone and I called, I called um, Bishop Showell. She was my therapist at that time. And I called and I was screaming and she was saying, what is it? And I said, this pain. I can't. And she said, well, what kind of pain? And I said, it's in my leg. It's in my leg. I said, I got to go to the emergency room. I got to go to the emergency room. It's in my leg. And so she kept talking to me and she said, just take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath. And as she began to say, take a deep breath, and I took a deep breath, and it started subsiding. But this thing went on for about almost a half hour. And then I just began to cry, and, and, and she said, do you know what just happened to you? And I said, no. She said, apparently, the, that was a place that you were kicked in that destroyed a nerve in 2007. And now the nerve has mended itself and come back to life. And that's why now it feels like it's a fresh pain because it's been laying under the lining of your skin paralyzed. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. That's why you can tell when God is about to do something awesome in your life. I'm talking to somebody. Because the enemy will choose those times to awaken an old wound, an old scar, something that you thought you got over a long time ago. Because he knows what's about to happen is about to shift the earth realm because a space has been made for you. Who is God talking to right there? Grind your way to greatness. Who is God talking to right there? I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. This is why the old thoughts will come to try to paralyze you. Because it doesn't like this new highway. This is why when you're driving down the, 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 the passageway and you minding your own business. And somebody pull up throwing eggs at your car. Because they want your focus. They want you to leave out of the highway. And they want you to become so focused over here that you miss your exit. Woo. Good Lord have mercy. Good Lord have mercy. I got to talk about this. No, we headed somewhere. 
They want to get you stuck in the cycle. But the prophetic word comes to exit you. It comes to exit you. And if you miss this exit, I don't know that you'll get it again. Because what I'm feeling on this page this time is too different. It's too different. It's way, way, way too different. I, I, I can't. It, it's too real. No, this, this, this right here. This right here ain't just talk. What I'm feeling on this page is way too real. This thing got life in it for somebody. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. But I don't know that you will get it again. I just think this is the season when you need to just stop playing. I think this is the season where you just need to decide. Whew. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still at times. Out of nowhere, I can feel it, I, I can I can I can feel my body go off balance. And the doctor said, it's going to take a minute. That's why I hadn't returned back to dancing yet. He said, it's going to take a minute. Because now your kidneys, your liver, everything is sitting in the right place. Now your intestines is not up through your esophagus. So even you're learning how to breathe different. That's why success ain't for no punk. You can play all you want to. I, I don't care what you say. I don't care what I don't care if you successful at, at, at digging ditches and, and and building carts that people told watermelons in. Success. Success? You can't be no punk and be successful. You better get a wine that's about their name. You can't be somebody that's whining and talking about you want to be successful. Because that's work. And that work and the power to accomplish it comes from within you. Up here. Listen to what he says. But what makes it different this time is because you have been anointed. From the Holy One. You have been set apart specially gifted specially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit prepared for this and all you know the truth you know the truth now because he teaches us and illuminates our minds and guards us from Error. Y'all, I can't. I can't. Y'all want me out today. For real. For real. Y'all want me out today. Y'all want me out today. <sighs> Let me get out of here. I want you to email me your daily grind. Quite a few of you have gotten your sweatshirts. I want you to take a photograph and email me at G, the number two, G at JuanitaBottom.com. G, the number two, G at JuanitaBottom.com. Put your sweatshirt on and tell me what your latest grind is. You never know, you'll look up on the page and see you on the page. You gotta grind your way to greatness. Vicky Winans is saying today, you can make it. Long as I'm with you, there's nothing you can do. Give it one more try. Come on, grind your way to greatness. Too hard. This 
blessing cost you 